Dear all, this is the fourth audio recap, a summary of the International Business Law Lectures by Dr. Marco Wakami at the European Law School Bachelor's Course of the Maastricht University. This is a summary of the fourth lecture of the course. It is meant to be a brief overview, which does not replace the attendance to the lectures or the tutorials, the reading of the course reader, and of the recommended literature thereon. Please mind also that for your memorandum and mock arbitration strategy, you're required to cite all relevant articles, which for the sake of time are not always mentioned in this recording. For practicality reasons, and as this recording was made on the 8th March, the International Women's Day, the use of she should be understood as including also the male form. There will be also no funny or unexpected sound effects, so as to give you a break of these for at least a week. In week four, we focus in international carriage of goods by sea, more specifically in the relationship between the shipper and the carrier. The eight Visby rules are the set of rules which apply when we have a contract of carriage covered by a bill of lading, which is a document of title that serves as a receipt to evidence the carriage contract and thereby can be used to receive payment from the bank. Also, the goods must be carried between ports in two different states and either the bill of lading was issued in a contracting state or the carriage is from a port in a contracting state or the contract states that the relevant rule is that of a state that actually gave effect to the Hague Visby rules, that is to say, whose national rules actually reflect the content of those in the Hague Visby rules. Whenever applicable, the Hague Visby rules are mandatory and do not admit reservations, even though, under Article 7, the parties keep some autonomy for issues of liability arising before and after the period for which the Eight Visby rules apply. This period is called the tackle-to-tackle -tackle period, and it is the period from the beginning of loading of the goods on the ship to the completion of their discharge from the ship. The original nature of the egg rules, as standard bills of lading clauses, may explain why the basic obligation of the carrier to deliver the goods to the consignee in time is not mentioned, although we should consider it, it is implied. The two main obligations of the carrier under the Egg Visby rules are to 1. Do the best effort is to provide a seaworthy ship before its departure, as contained in Article 3, Paragraph 1, and use a reasonable care in caring for the cargo as contained in Article 3, Paragraph 2, and described in the Albacora case. The duty of seaworthiness is an overriding obligation, whereas the duty of caring for the cargo is an absolute obligation. This means that only if the carrier did not care enough for the cargo, she can rely on the exceptions of liability provided for by Article 4. Whereas, if she did not provide a seaworthy ship, she cannot. This is considered to be also the case when there are multiple causes for the damage. As for the exceptions, the carrier can avoid being liable if she proved that she used due diligence in making the ship seaworthy prior to the beginning of the trip, under Article 4, Paragraph 1. In the following paragraph, we have a series of circumstances where the carrier can be exempted from liability, all named in subparagraphs A to Q. The burden of proof that it was the carrier's breach that led to the loss generally falls on the claimant. If she does a good job, then it's the carrier who has the burden of proving she was as diligent as could be expected from her. Even when the carrier does not manage to prove she was diligent, 
liability can be excluded whenever the breach of Article 3, Paragraph 2 is in stake, and it can be limited in any case, so also in the case of the breach of Article 3, Paragraph 2, by the limits provided for in Article 4, Paragraph 5, Subparagraph A. We hope you enjoy this fourth audio recap, and we look forward to seeing you next week in the International Business Law Lecture.